Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Illinois Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us this evening. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time throughout the evening. Your camera and microphone are turned off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening this evening, so please be sure to sign up for additional sessions after this. The presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash Illinois. And now I would like to turn it over to our first presenter of the evening, and that is Northern Illinois University. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tedra Muherter. I am from Northern Illinois University. I'm happy that you all are here. I'm going to quickly just switch over and share my screen so I can share our presentation about some highlights that we have for you. So a couple of updates for all of you students is that NIU no longer has an application fee. The application is online. We always recommend that you apply early on. So those applications for the next fall are typically out in August 15th. So the sooner you apply, the sooner you can get processed and start working on your scholarship opportunities. Our admissions criteria is a 2.0 cumulative GPA, 24 credit hours completed, and being in good standing at the last college you attended. So if you meet those criteria, just make sure you're submitting your official transcripts along with those applications. If you do not meet those criteria, we are going to go according to our freshman criteria. We are now test free. So we are requiring that the students who are going into auto admit have at least a two point or a 3.0 cumulative GPA. Anything below that is going to go into our holistic review. Our application deadlines do remain the same, May 14th for the summer, August 1st for the fall, December 1st for the spring. Let's talk about money, your scholarships. Let's um, look at that. If you're hitting a 3.0 cumulative GPA or above, you are eligible for our merit-based scholarships. These are auto eligible scholarships as long as you're hitting those deadlines once again. And we still keep those open until they are all gone. So, um, you can find these scholarships on our website. Most importantly, make sure you know those deadlines. March 1st is the deadline for fall and summer transfers. October 1st is the deadline for our spring transfers. We also have some additional scholarship opportunities for transfer students. We have our Husky Legacy Award, which is for students who have parents who graduated from NIU, which is a $1,000 scholarship for the first year. We also have AIM High Transfer Achievement Scholarship, which is a $2,000 stackable scholarship. And our general scholarships are um, all through the My NIU Scholarship um, platform. So that you know as students, oftentimes we get asked the question, when am I going to know what my financial aid looks like? That package is sent out in early May. So we are actually sending those out to our students currently. Uh, we are really focused on building community. We have a beautiful week of welcome for our transfer students. There also is a class for that. It's called UNIV 201, which helps you to acclimate to NIU. We have living learning communities, six unique cultural centers, over 200 student organizations. If we don't have a student organization and you're interested in doing something new, all you have to do is get four like minds and one advisor, and you can start up your own new student organization. We also offer hundreds hundreds of jobs on campus, which give you that professional opportunity, as well as the flexibility because you are ultimately a student and also you're building networking experiences. We have many different visit opportunities here on campus. I did wanna show you um, real quick those opportunities. We do have an upcoming open house. So in that open house, which is gonna be April 24th, you just simply sign up for that. And all of our various different campus partners are gonna be there online and in live chats. We also offer virtual presentations for first-generation college students in both English and Spanish. We offer transfer get information Fridays, again, in English and Spanish. And of course, you can also set up a one-on-one -on -one transfer appointment, again, in English or Spanish that fits your schedule. A couple of other things that we offer right now are um, particular academic program um, 
opportunities. So if you are, for example, a teaching and education major, they have specific events just for education students. We also have campus resource events, which includes financial aid, honors, scholarships. And right now we are not having live tours. Um, those are suspended due to COVID-19. We do have to ha hope to have live tours soon, but you can watch these quick videos. There are all sorts of various different ways that you can have an in-depth look at the whole campus. If you're not sure who your academic advisor is for your region, you can always log on to our admissions counselor and do a find your admissions counselor. So through that link, that will essentially show you who your counselor is. If you're a first year transfer, you can also do live chats with counselors with one of us admissions counselors or students through our website. So there are a variety of different ways that you can have those touch points with us as staff, as well as our students. So we do want you to be in touch, ask those questions. We're definitely here for you. When in doubt, reach out because this is what we're here to do. Transfer Center at NIU.edu. I hope to see some of you in the chat. And again, if you have any questions, just reach out to us. Thank you so much. Um, next up, we are going to move over to Butler University. Hi everybody, my name is Emily Robison. I'm the Assistant Director for Transfer Admission at Butler University. We are here in Indianapolis. We're super excited to be hosting uh, March Madness this year. So lots of excitement on the Butler campus and in the city of Indianapolis with that. Uh, a little bit about Butler, if you're not familiar, uh, we are a liberal arts school, about 4,700 students total, uh, 4,700 undergraduates. We do have some graduate programs as well, but you can study uh, the arts, business, communication, education, pharmacy and health sciences, uh, liberal arts and sciences. So about 65 different majors spread across those six different colleges. Uh, we have an average class size of 22, and uh, we have an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So a lot of good opportunity to get to know your professors and for them to know you. Your professors are your academic advisors. You're assigned an academic advisor. Uh, we have uh, over 130 different student clubs and organizations, so lots of ways to be active outside the classroom, lots of leadership opportunities uh, in those clubs and organizations. Um, internships are very big at Butler, and we have an office dedicated uh, to helping students find the internships that are a good fit for them, uh, career and professional success office, or CAPS, assist students with those internships, and they help uh, as students approach graduation, uh, looking for those job opportunities as well. Uh, something else that's very much supported at Butler is undergraduate research. If you're interested in doing research at Butler uh, as an undergraduate student, you would be supported in that. Uh, of course, it's on pause right now because of COVID, but we do have uh, over 200 study abroad programs in 60 different countries. So we look forward to opening that up again very soon. Uh, also study away opportunities for a semester in New York City or in Washington, DC. Um, we uh, have uh, NCAA Division I athletics. Any home athletic event that you want to attend, you just show your student ID to claim your ticket. There's no additional cost to support the Bulldogs. We also have some amazing arts uh, facilities on campus. So if, if uh, athletics aren't your thing, that's okay. We've got amazing arts programs as well. Um, we have uh, transfer students welcomed to Butler for every semester. Uh, the greatest number probably come in the fall, but we welcome you in the fall, the spring, or the summer. You can apply by submitting the Butler transfer application or the common app for transfer students. Uh, either way, there is no application fee. Uh, all we need are your official college transcripts if you have over 20 credit hours. And uh, the fall application deadline is June 1. 
the spring application deadline is November 1. Uh, transfer credits are very easily accepted at Butler. 100 level classes or higher grades of C minus or better are typically accepted for your bachelor's degree program. Uh, we offer transfer scholarships at Butler, three levels of transfer scholarship. If you have a 3.0 or higher cumulative GPA, you may be eligible for a $10,000, $14,000, or $16,000 per year transfer scholarship. If you are a member of Phi Theta Kappa, there's an additional $1,500 award that we stack on top of that transfer scholarship. And of course, if you complete the FAFSA, we will determine if you're eligible for uh, any federal aid and or the Butler grant. Um, we do offer jobs on campus as well, if that's something that students are interested in. And if you'd like to visit Butler, we would love to see you. We have both virtual visits and on-campus visits available now. Uh, we are keeping the numbers very low and uh, following protocols to keep everybody safe on campus. But you can visit campus if you wish or schedule a virtual visit as well. Um, I hope that I will see an application from you. And if you have any questions at all, you can go to butler.edu slash admission and look for that transfer link. Uh, again, I'm Emily Robison. I'm the transfer admission counselor and assistant director. I'm the only one that works with transfer students. So I would be your transfer counselor. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, Emily. Next up, we're going to go to Millican University. Hello, my name is Mackenzie Larrick. I am the Senior Transfer Admission Counselor here at Millican. I'm also a Millican alum, class of 2017, and I actually came to Millican as a transfer student myself, so I know how important it is to have the support and resources that you need as you're making that transition. So if you are not familiar with uh, the Decatur area, we are located um, directly in the middle of central Illinois. So we're about three hours south of Chicago, two hours north of St. Louis. We're a mid-sized city of about 76,000 people. Um, check out LimitlessDecatur.com, that link that we have down there at the bottom. There's a lot of great information about the exciting things that are going on in our community. Um, also like to mention the top area employers that are listed there in the center of this slide. These are really great when thinking about possible internship opportunities, volunteer opportunities, or if you choose to stay in the area after graduation, um, you may choose to start a career with one of them. So just a little bit of Millican at a glance, we'll just highlight a couple of these things. We do have about 2000 students enrolled at Millican, 20% of that uh, student population is transfer students and that's been growing steadily for the last five years. So you won't be alone in your transition to Millican. Um, the 10 to one student to faculty ratio is one of my favorite things to point out. This really um, makes us stand out. It makes a difference. A lot of individual um, attention from faculty members. You get to work one-on-one -on -one a lot. Um, the 95% graduate success rate is definitely something I like to mention. Um, this means that 95% of our graduates either gain employment or enter graduate school within six months of graduation. We do have over 50 academic programs and 23 men's and women's division three sports in the CCIW conference. Um, I know that the private university tuition prices tend to look intimidating, but if you look just above that, we do award over $44 million in aid each year. And being a private university, we do have very generous donors that allow us to offer private scholarship and grant funds um, to aid what you are offered through FAFSA. So as I said, we do have over 50 academic programs. Those fall within four colleges and schools here at Millikan, the College of Arts and Sciences, the College of Fine Arts, the College of Professional Studies, and the Tabor School of Business. So a little bit about campus life, one of the exciting things, right? We have a very inclusive, vibrant campus community. I think that comes with being a small, close-knit um, campus. Um, our students are very, very involved. On average, they're involved in about three student organizations at a time. And we do currently have over 90 student organizations here on campus. So there's just about something for everyone. Um, but the great thing is that you can actually find five friends and a faculty advisor to create a new organization if you can't find something that works for you. 
If you are interested in applying, we do accept an application through our website, millikan.edu slash apply. It is entirely free, but we also accept the Common App. For transfer applicants, we only require official college transcripts from each institution that you've attended, so you do not have to worry about high school credentials. We are currently accepting applications for the fall 2021 semester. Spring 2022 and fall 2022 will open this summer, July 1st. Um, and we do admit students on a rolling basis, so we do not have a hard deadline. We will We'll work with students through the admission process up until about two weeks before the semester begins. And my contact information is listed there. Be sure to take that down if you want any additional information or send me questions. Thank you, Mackenzie. Next up, we're going to go to the University of St. Francis. Thank you, thank you so much. My name is Eloise Phillips, and I am the Associate Director of Undergraduate Missions here at the University of St. Francis. The University of St. Francis is a small, high-quality Catholic university located in Joliet, Illinois. Um, here at USF, we have four locations. The main location is in the, is in the downtown area, and it's on 24 acres of land in the cathedral area. We also have a, um, a location um, downtown Juliet, and that's called the St. Bonaventure Campus, and that's for uh, College of Arts and Sciences and College of Business. We have a campus that's about five miles away, and that is called our St. Clair's Campus, and that's for our nursing students. The last campus we have is in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and that's for our PA students. At USF, we have about a total enrollment of about 4,200 students. Of the 4,200, about 1,700 students are undergrad. Of that 1,700, about 43% of those students um, stay on campus. So we have on-campus housing, um, and we, so we have in on-campus housing, we have dorms, they're co-ed and non-co-ed. And we also have students that, that commute. Here at US, we offer 45 undergraduate programs. The top majors are nursing, education, allied health, social work, and business. And for these majors, internships are available. They're not mandatory, but they're highly rec recommended. We also offer 14 graduate programs and two doctoral programs. Uh, the doctoral programs are in uh, education and college of nursing. Um, USF also offers um, clubs and organizations. Um, there's 45 of them. And we offer numerous work study opportunities. Um, we have 23 athletic teams and we're NAIA athletes. So that means that that student who was recruited for that purpose will receive an academic scholarship along with the uh, athletic scholarship and they're stackable. 100% of our classes are taught by faculty. 75% of that faculty have terminal degrees, which means they have the highest degree in their fields. Um, our average class size is about 15 students per class and that depends on the major itself. One of the good things I want to, want to point out about USF is that 98% is that of our students receive a job within six months of graduation. If not, they go on to, they go on to an extra grad program. So we're proud of that. Uh, we have alumni in 50 states and 19 countries. This is beneficial because it's networking and also um, allows other opportunities. Just a little bit about the admission requirements for transfer students. Um, so the transfer students you know, can come to St. Francis with a 2.50 GPA on a 4.0 scale. We're looking for 12 transfer over credit hours and proficiency in math and English, and that gets them in the door. Uh, we accept up to 70 credit hours from a community college or 90 from a university. In order to graduate from USF, um, you're required 120 hours to graduate, and you must complete at least 32 hours at St. Francis. Um, since nursing is one of our um, highest sought out majors, um, we don't require uh, actual uh, admissions test, um, and we have direct entry into the program. For application process, there is an application deadline. We're rolling admissions, um, and there is an application fee. Just a little bit about the scholarships. Um, we offer scholarships, you know, uh, renewable scholarships to all students, and those scholarships range from $7,000 to $13,000, and they're all GPA driven, and they are renewable. Um, we have numerous transfer um, resources. We uh, do credit, credit evaluation. So if you have a, um, uh, unofficial transcripts and you want your file reviewed for any of the majors that we offer, we just ask you to simply send it to us and we will evaluate it for you. We offer um, 
transfer guides, on the spot admissions, and financial aid appointments if needed. And we also offer what we call Transfer Advising Tuesday. So since I have just a little bit of time left, I want to let you know a couple other things about us. You know, we have two new majors, um, um, Business Analytics and Digital Humanities. Uh, now for us, for you know, the actual next two years, our tuition will not increase. It's going to remain the same until 2022. In our learning formats at USF, you know, for COVID, we're doing online, in-campus, and also um, online, in-campus, and, on, and um, hybrid. So those students will have opportunity, you know, to actually do either one of those learning formats based upon what their needs are. If you need more information, I'll be happy to provide my information in the chat. Thanks for having me. Hopefully, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, and next up, we are going to go to Lakeview College of Nursing. Okay, everyone. Hi, I'm sorry. I was muted. I'm Nigel Givens. I'm the admissions recruiter from Lakeview College of Nursing. And here at Lakeview, all we do is nursing. So actually, all of our students are actually transferring into our program for the nursing major and they graduate with their bachelor's of science in nursing and their RN license. And we have one campus in Danville, Illinois, and our other campus is in Charleston, Illinois. So we are centrally Illinois located. Um, our NCLEX pass rate for 2020 is at a 95%, and about 91% of all of our qualified applicants um, are admitted into our program. And because we have two campuses, typically we do not have to waitlist a lot of students. And that's something that you're going to want to ask whatever nursing program that you're applying to, because that's definitely something that you want to keep in mind. Um, both of our campus offer the same great amenities. We have a nursing skills lab where anything that can happen in real life, we can use our simulators to simulate it. Um, all of our students are going to clinical locations in the surrounding counties um, and all of our lectures are in person. So we are in person. Um, we are following all state and CDC guidelines. So if there needs to be a reason for us to um, be hybrid or to be virtual, we do have the ability, but we are in person. So two unique things about Lakeview is that um, about 84% of our students receive some type of financial aid. Tuition right now is about $27,000 per year, and our program traditionally is two years, um, but we do have an accelerated track that can be completed in as fast as 18 months. Um, but we do offer a lot of private scholarships and, like I said, financial aid. We do offer a merit and need-based scholarship. Both of those are worth $20,000, as well as Phi Theta Kappa scholarships that range between $5,000 and $2,000. And we also offer a lot of private scholarships once you are admitted into the program. We just ask that all of our students complete the FAFSA application um, and that qualifies them to apply for all of our private scholarships. Um, for our admissions requirements, all of our students as they are transferring into our program must have completed 60 credit hours of general education and pre-required coursework. Uh, the cumulative GPA um, is required to be a 2.5 or higher, and our students also have to take the full HESI A2 entrance exam. On average, our students have about a 3.0, 3.1 um, that are admitted into the program. Um, for the application process, all um, official college level transcripts must be submitted. We do have an online application. Um, you can submit reference letters as well, and then again, that HESI score. Nursing school is very competitive, so we ask that all of our students do well on the 
essay questions on the applications and do as well as they can on the HESI test. Um, this is a sheet that shows basically what we're asking our um, prospective students to complete so that English composition one and two, speech, anatomy and physiology one and two, chemistry one and two, microbiology, statistics, as well as fine arts courses, nutrition, medical terminology and humanities courses as well as we are a bachelor's of science program. Once our students complete um, their prereqs and are admitted to the program and complete the program, then they take the NCLEX to get their RN license. Um, we do admit students in the fall and spring. So right now students are applying by the April 1st deadline for fall of 2021. And the next semester in the fall, they would be applying for the spring semester. So our students actually apply the semester before they plan to attend and can can complete any remaining prereqs in that in-between time. We are in person, so we are offering private tours, um, but we are able to meet you virtually as well. So please feel free to email me at admissions at lakeviewcol.edu for any questions. You can also visit our website, lakeviewcol.edu and our YouTube page if you would like to check out things on campus. Thank you so much, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. Um, and next up, we're going to go to our last university of the evening, and that is Webster University. So hello, my name is Stacy Tunacliff. I am the transfer coordinator at Webster University. Webster is a private liberal arts college that was founded in 1915. Um, we have one of the most diverse student populations in, of any college our size in America. We do like to boast a nine to one student to teacher ratio. All of our class sizes are capped at 25 students. More often than not, you're actually only going to find about 10 to 15 students per class. That was the experience I had. I myself was also a transfer student to Webster. I earned my bachelor's degree and my master's degree there. Um, we have a variety of hands-on classroom opportunities throughout five schools and colleges, and we offer over 100 undergraduate majors. We have approximately 2,100 undergraduate students on our Webster Groves campus, which is kind of the home campus. 850 of those students are residents, and about half of those 2,100 students are transfer students. So the five colleges and schools that we have at Webster are the College of Arts and Sciences, Fine Arts, School of Communications, School of Education and the School of Business and Technology. Now, again, within those five schools and colleges, you're gonna find over a hundred programs, typically about 120 different programs that you can choose from. We make it really easy for transfer students to transfer to Webster. Um, we accept as a general rule up to 90 credit hours transferred into Webster, as long as they are college level coursework completed successfully with a C minus or better. We do sometimes accept Ds. They have severe restrictions and typically only come in as elective credit, but sometimes they will make that exception. Campus life at Webster, we have 70 plus clubs and organizations. There's something for everyone. And if there isn't something that you are interested in joining, you can also start your own club. Basically you find 10 other students that have the same type of passion that you do and you start your own with a faculty or staff advisor. We are an NCAA Division III athletic program with 16 teams overall. For those of you who don't know, the NCAA Division III means that our students are students first and athletes second. We do not award athletic scholarships to students. So we have these men's sports, baseball, basketball, cheerleading, cross country, golf, soccer, tennis, track and field. And then we also have our women's sports, basketball, cheerleading, cross country, soccer, tennis, track and field, and volleyball. Um, our mascot, everybody wants to know what it is. It's the Gorlock. It is named for the intersection of Gore and Lockwood Avenue where Webster's home campus sits. It was created by students in the 1980s. Um, this is kind of the athletic version of the Gorlock and there's a bigger, fluffier, friendlier version that's kind of the standard. We do offer on-campus housing for students. Um, they are residential suite style rooms in residence halls. We also have on-campus apartments and we have off-campus apartments that the university leases. Roommate assignments are determined using a very in-depth questionnaire and we offer free laundry. 
Transfer students are not required to live on campus, but they do have that option. Study abroad is one of the things that we really like to brag about. These campuses that you see here in Athens, Vienna, Leiden, and more, those are actual Webster University campuses, not the pictures that are showing, of course, um, but the campus locations in these different countries are Webster University. So you're taking Webster classes with Webster students and Webster faculty. Um, your financial aid goes with you if you choose to study abroad. Your scholarships go with you. We have a world traveler program in which Webster actually pays your airfare there and back if you choose one of these Webster locations. So what are your next steps? We make it super easy to apply. No application fee. You just visit applywu.webster.edu or you can use the Common App or the College Coalition applications. For transfer students, we request or we need you to request all of your transcripts from each college that you attended. This includes any dual credit you earned while in high school. If you have less than 30 hours of college credit at the time of application, we also request that you send your high school transcripts. Now we do need the officials, but in the meantime, we can make decisions on unofficial copies if you have those to send. Now being a private school, um, again, tuition looks scary. It's 28,500 per year for regular students. Um, that does not include the conservatory students for our fine arts programs. However, 96.8% of our students receive some sort of financial aid awarding. You can also see in the box on the left, we offer transfer student scholarships that range from $10,000 to $16,000 per year. So basically, if you're going to be a full-time student at Webster seeking your first bachelor degree and you have a 2.5 cumulative GPA or higher, you're going to be eligible for a scholarship. We're going to award that automatically at the time of admission. We also have a $1,000 Phi Theta Kappa scholarship. We award that automatically. If one of your parents graduated from Webster, there's a $1,000 scholarship for that. All of those are stackable. Uh, the A-plus scholarship is another one and proud to serve as well. We also have a lot of competitive scholarships that you can view on our website. If you just go to webster.edu and search for scholarships, it'll bring them all up. So we are doing on-campus visits right now. They have reopened in a limited capacity. We're limiting the amount of students that are allowed um, to these visits at a time. Basically, you'll get a presentation similar to this one, and then you'll get to go on a walking tour of the campus. If you don't feel comfortable doing that yet, which we totally understand, even with following CDC protocol, I know some people aren't really quick to do that right now. We are taking virtual visits as well. So if you go to webster.edu slash visit, you can schedule an on-campus or virtual appointment. Our social media, Attend Webster is our Facebook account and Attend Webster U is our Instagram account. So give us a follow. This is our first year admissions team and this is our transfer team. So we, um, if I didn't say it already, we're located in Webster Groves, Missouri. It's a small little suburb of St. Louis. It's about 15 minutes from downtown St. Louis. So thank you. Um, I will drop my information in the chat if anybody has any follow-up questions. Thank you, Stacy. And now that we've heard from all six schools, I would like to ask all of our panelists to join me for one last question. We're gonna go around Robin style in the order that they all presented in. Um, but I would like for you guys, if you could, to share with all of our people watching, what advice would you give someone going through the transfer process? Okay, I will start from NIU. Um, the biggest advice, I've worked in transfer for about 13 years. I was a transfer student myself, and I would say the biggest piece of advice is to find your people right away. Find your supports, get to know who they are, and know your deadlines. Deadlines are everything. Deadlines can help you to get money, save money. Um, it really eases in the transition. But again, my cheesy quote, when in doubt, reach out. That is a real thing. I mean, we're all here with different things to offer you. So shop well, ask those questions, and reach out to your people. Hi, I'm Emily from Butler. Uh, I, I would certainly echo what she said. Um, I, I guess the, the big thing is I've been doing this now for 10, no, 11 years. Um, all, all the folks I work with are great. We've been doing this a long time. Uh, but we know this is probably the first time and maybe the only time you're ever going to transfer. So 
there are lots of things that you're not supposed to know. So please don't stress over what you don't know because all you have to do is ask us. We've, we've been doing this a long time and there are no stupid questions, there are no dumb questions. We are happy to help. I'm constantly reminding myself that even though I've been doing this for a long time, I know that this information is new to a lot of people and I try and start at the very beginning and uh, use the language that you're familiar with and not use jargon and terms you're not gonna understand. So please, please, please feel welcome to ask questions and, and just know that we know this is a new experience for you and we're here to help. Definitely great advice so far. Um, I would say definitely plan ahead. Um, if you can, just give yourself plenty of time to figure out transfer credits, timelines, deadlines, things that you need to know um, so that you don't feel rushed, so that you don't have that added stress. The transition can be a difficult period. So also advocate for yourself. Don't be afraid to communicate. Be open with your counselor, with this staff. Um, like they've said, we're here to help you and we want to do everything we can to make this transition smooth and easy for you. I think it's my turn, right? And one thing that I really would advise, you know, to not only transfer um, students, but any students is to really, really, really um, follow your passion. I really believe your passion is your purpose. And I believe, you know, that's going to allow, allow you to succeed if you're following your passion and not your purpose and not go after the mighty dollar. I know people always say, you know, I want to make money. But at the end of the day, you know, following your passion is going to really be your purpose. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions. Use all available resources. Um, and if you're at a school, you know, where you're not getting the, uh, the assistance that you need, don't be afraid to say, hey, you know, I need this from you. If I can't have it, then maybe I'm not the right school for you. So make sure, you know, like I say, follow your passions, use all resources and make sure you get what you're entitled to, you know, because it's your, it's your education. I would say just make sure that you're communicating. Um, ask which classes are going to be transferable. If you're unsure, ask about scholarship opportunities. Um, a lot of times there's scholarships out there that students don't even apply for. So definitely ask about financial aid. Ask about you know your transferable credits just to make sure that you're ready so that when you do apply, you're a strong candidate. I would say like everyone else on this panel, ask questions. Um, I know it can sometimes be scary to, you know, walk up to the, the table at a table visit or come up to somebody in the middle of a fair or even just take that first step of calling or emailing. Um, we don't bite. I, I'm pretty sure none of us bite. Um, but everyone that works in this kind of position is in this position for a reason. We want students to have a good experience. And we wanna be that person that students can come to to ask questions and figure out how to navigate this process. Thank you all so much for sharing that wonderful advice and for presenting um, to all of our students and families this evening. So now that we've heard from all six schools, I just wanna thank everyone for joining us. Um, when you close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this was just one of many different sessions being hosted this evening, so please be sure to sign up for additional sessions. In about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording, as well as the other session's recordings at strivescan.com Illinois. Thank you everyone for presenting, and thank you everyone for watching this evening. Have a great night.